Hi everybody, good afternoon. This is Judy from Fox City Squilt Company, and I hope you're all safely inside. And we wanted, to, we miss you guys at the store, so we wanted to do something fun. And so I'm here in my house, and I wanted to show you around my sewing space. And one of the reasons I wanna do that is because every time I go to somebody's house, I always ask to see their sewing space. And I always feel like I learn something really fun or I get a new idea or I get um, some good ideas for storage or uh, some good ideas for whatever it is, uh, setting up my space or having something in my space. So, um, and so I hope that maybe you get a few tips from this. Hi, Audra. And, um, so I'm and I'm always very nervous about Facebook Live because I always think I look weird and sound weird and right now I feel like you know my hair looks a little bit like a football helmet. So, um, but uh, welcome to my home and I'm going to take you into my sewing space. Um, this is my uh, sewing room and I have sewing space. Um, I have a few things hanging on the wall. My husband has put up some great. Um, things for me to hang on the wall. I like to hang things on the wall that or make me feel happy. So one of the things that I have on the wall right now is this, and it's not because of so much of the uh, quilt itself, but it's the fabrics that I really, really love. Hi, Laura. Um, this one, this was a shop sample and went out very quickly. And then I also have on this wall, a project that so also in my sewing space I have a television and I have to admit that um, my bargain uh, hunt hi Carrie how are you and um, so and then one of the other favorite things is my view so I am sitting right now behind my sewing machine and that's the view it's very it's very soothing for me even on a yucky snowy day, this is the view that I get to see. I'm lucky, uh, two windows in my sewing space, and Tim has hung a big board where I do my ironing. So let me show you what else I have in my sewing space. If I'm going too fast, hi Janet. Um, if I'm going to, um, in my sewing space, I have a serger, and I've you've seen so, a few garments in the store. Hi Bonnie. <laughs> And you've seen a few garments in the store, and this is what I typically make those on. I'm not a serger expert, and I'll be honest with you, I've only had a serger for about six months. So I am, so I am just uh, learning to serge on. What I have, it says low network connection. Sorry, Laura, that's why it's freezing on you. The other thing I have is I'm really fortunate on the bottom and it has storage where I sit over here. And it also has on the back side of it. So I don't want to show you too much of my floor because um, my floor is just so dirty. Things that I always keep in my sewing room um, and I like to have them when I'm handy is this jar here that was made. So I like to keep it there. And those are my paper scissors and stuff that I can use on paper. Then the other thing that I have is an additional little light if I'm doing handwork. And then I have my little basket with all of my little goodies, my unsewer, um, I never do a seam ripper, and um, some other simple things. I always have colored pencils. Um, and then the other thing that I always have is my water in my Yeti. And yes, it's just water. Um, with a lid on it because I spilled once and that was all it took. I have my thread catcher kinds of tape in my sewing room. One of the tapes that I keep a lot of is uh, painter's tape and I'll tell you why in just a minute. I have scotch tape which helps me um, and I uh, tape up my bobbins and then um, what else do I have? Oh, I always have two sketch pads on hand. I have one here, and this is just to jot down notes, and I always have a pencil nearby. And then the other sketch pad I have over here underneath my big board where I iron. And with this, what I do is 
I'm always thinking of patterns and things, so I quick jot them down. And right now I have uh, a pattern that came into my head, so I was uh, just drawing that out, and I wanted to use one jelly roll and one charm pack with it. And this is the approximate size I'm going to make it. And here's kind of what I have in mind. Third pencils is because I'm probably going to mark this up. Scratch pads full of patterns that were in my head, and then one of these days I'm going to um, publish them or do something, but who knows. Um, the other thing that I have a lot of in my sewing room is containers. So I like being very organized. So I have a couple of containers. This container, I usually just pick it up and I throw it in um, my bag when I'm going to go anywhere for a quilt retreat and it has everything in it that I need. This is one of those snapware containers. I like them because the lid will fit right on there. It won't accidentally pop off. And then everything I need is in there. My rotary cutter, my flat pins, two different kinds of sewing, uh, uh, sewing machine needles, um, pen, marking pen, scissors, and of course, because I'm old, my reading glasses. So, <laughs> and then, um, so this is one that I take to retreats if I have a sewing machine and is made by Koala Cabinets. So, um, and I got my Koala Cabinet as a floor model at um, Nancy's Notions. So I got a really good deal. And then this is um, a pack that I take on an airplane. It has hand embroidery in it. So, and that will fit on my carry-on. So those are the things that I have in my sewing room. So, um, and then I'm going to show you a couple of projects that I'm working on. And then I'm going to show, give you a, a tip that I usually use. So right now for the store, I'm working on the stargazing block of the month. It is just, it's absolutely gorgeous. I have um, about four uh, months worth done. And it's made with these Marcus, um, and they're called uh, New Aged Muslins. And I love them because they're just so rich. They're not quite solid and they're just absolutely gorgeous. Um, like this brown is just so rich and beautiful. And so um, this is a, like I said, this is a block of the month. It started last month and I believe that it is full. So I'm sorry for showing you that, but um, these are some of the things that we're working on. The other one that I'm really excited about is this one, and this one is called um, Stargazing. This is a paper piece block of the month that we are starting in the shop next month. Yeah, because next month, yeah, March. We're starting it in March, and it is all paper pieced, and it is all done in batiks. And everything, all of the colors that you see here is all of the colors that we will be using. So right now I have the first two rows done. So I have um, this row and this row done. Um, so for the first month you get the fabric for the connector blocks. And then the next month you will get the two blocks that are in the neck in that row. And then the third month you get through the fabric for these three blocks. And then you get, the next month you'll get the connector blocks. So I have um, basically four months worth of sewing done. And then the next one I'm working on is going to be this one called the cha-cha. So those are the cha-cha colors and it's, it tells me how to cut it. It's, it's really, it looks really difficult, which is, but it's really simple, which is what I love about this paper piece block. And what's really nice is, is is it's great big pieces. So it looks small here, but the pieces are big and this finishes a 12 and a half inch block. So if you like this, uh, call the shop. I believe it's only $17.95 a month and that includes your patterns and all the fabric you needed. And this uh, quilt finishes 80 by 92. So then the other thing that I wanted to show you is on my sewing machine and people come in the three stripes on your uh, sewing machine. 
And the reason, and then there's one back there, I don't know if you can see it. And the reason that I have these on here is how many times have you done a half square triangle and then um, they tell you to draw a, a, a horizontal or a diagonal line on your square. So um, this helps me in a line. And I'm gonna quick show you what I'm talking about. So what I do is I take my light fabric or my dark fabric or whatever it is, the two pieces that we're gonna to have to put together, uh, right sides together to make a half square triangle. And I use my regular sewing foot, if you can see that. I don't use, sorry for, I keep, um, I don't use my quarter inch foot because it has that guide on there that will catch on the fabric when I'm um, making these half square triangles. So I'm gonna put you back up here, a tripod. So um, now I have my two pieces together and what I'm going to do is the red line that is here is the center. That's the center of my needle. This line here, the second black line, is a quarter inch from the center. And this third line here is obviously, it's a half inch from the center. And the reason that I have this here is because I make a lot of bags. So, and bags typically call for a half inch seam allowance. So if it's a big piece of fabric, I have the guide all the way up and down. So what I do is, so I don't have to draw a line on the back of my fabric because I like instant gratification. I wanna get these done. I don't wanna have to draw on a piece of fabric. What I do is I lift my presser foot and I line it up so that the point is a quarter inch to the left of the center mark. And then if I look up here, I have a quarter inch guide here and I've, I've drawn a mark up here. So I make sure that that point is lined up also to that quarter inch line. I put dark thread in here so you can see what I'm doing. So then I just start sewing and you make sure that that point is still on your quarter inch mark. And you go all the way through to the end. So I hope you can hear that and I hope that that machine isn't too loud for you. And so now I have this stitched a quarter inch away from that center point and I didn't have to draw a line. So now if I wanna do the other side, oops, I just do it the very same way, only I just flip the fabric around. So I start it and I make sure that that top is pointing to that quarter inch and my bottom point is pointing to the quarter inch. And then I just start sewing. Okay, so now if I have done this right, and I'm not very straight, but if I've done this right, I now have a half inch in between. So now what I can do, I gotta pick you up again, and sorry about my finger here, but it should be a quarter inch, and then I can cut right in between, and I didn't have to draw a line. So you didn't have to draw a line, and you saved that much time. So instead of handling your fabric twice, you've now just handled it once. And then, of course, I have my handy-dandy block lock. I always have this in my sewing room. I have my handy-dandy block lock, and then I can trim it to the two and a half inches that I want. And, and that's all there is to it. So um, it just takes a little bit of drawing. If you don't mind drawing on your sewing cabinet, um, it saves just saves so much time. So, and that's one of my tips and tricks. So I would love it if I could see what you guys have in your sewing room. Tell me what you have in your sewing room. Show me a tip or trick. I love to see everybody's sewing space. If you're a knitter, show me your knitting space. If you uh, like to crochet, show me your, if, if you like just fibers in, in, in general. We would love to see what it is that you do, and sh share with us your tips and tricks. So um, 
Now I have to go out and snow blow because my husband's in London, but we will see you all later and stop in the shop and tomorrow 